Prime Minister welcomes CDB endorsement of Grenada as fastest growing economy in the Caribbean. Stay with us, the National Report begins now. With the details to the news for Thursday, 21st March 2019, I'm Delroy Louison. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, has welcomed the report from the Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB, that Grenada remains the fastest growing economy in the Caribbean. The CDB's latest country economic review for Grenada states that in 2018, Grenada continued to be the fastest growing economy in the region. Growth was estimated at 5.2% for the year, which translates to a five-year average of 5%. The CDB outlook for the states, and I quote, This strong outcome was driven by rising economic activity in the construction, private education, and manufacturing sectors, and was above the government of Grenada's forecast in the 2017 budget, unquote. Growth in the construction sector, according to the CDB, was 14.9% over 2017 figures. Reacting to the report, Dr. Mitchell said, quote, The CDB's country economic review of Grenada is really not surprising. In fact, it validates the statistics provided by the Ministry of Finance. In my opinion, we are often conservative in our approach, responsibly so, and the CDB report bears testimony to that as well, because the 2018 growth figures exceeded our projections." Unquote. The Prime Minister added that the local economy has experienced consistent growth for the last six years, and it is important that we maintain that positive trajectory. Therefore, government remains committed to facilitating continued growth and expansion of the sectors that are performing well and improving performance in those that are not. According to the Prime Minister, the debt-to-GDP ratio continues to decline and we remain on course to meet and in fact surpass the target of 60%, well ahead of the 2030 deadline set by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Describing its medium-term outlook for Grenada as positive, the CDB projects economic growth of 4.5% in 2019, driven by the construction, tourism, agriculture, and private education sectors. Government is planning to launch the much-talked-about Youth in Agriculture project in June. The project is designed to address the issues of youth unemployment and an aging population in the agricultural sector. During a meeting of the Upper House on Thursday, Youth Minister Senator Nolan Cox said they are currently working on the concept of the project. This is a very important uh, project for us, uh, Mr. President, and we are looking to target um, about 100 young persons over a five-year period uh, through this program in various initiatives. Senator Cox says government plans to continue its focus on skills development, which is an area of weakness not just in Grenada but in the region. In this vein, he made mention of a furniture-making project in Petit Martinique, where 10 young men are participating. The plan is to incorporate boat building in the project in the near future. Sanitation issues at the Grenville Secondary School are now resolved. In an interview today with Nigel Noel, an engineer with the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Public Utilities, it was confirmed that all major work is completed. Students resumed school on Thursday, March 21st. We get the details from Annette Moore. Repairs to the Grenville Secondary School's Sokaway facility are now complete, and parents, students and staff can now breathe easier, with toilet facilities at the school now functioning as normal. We had the um, block up in the digester of the, as I said, it was the end point of the sewer system that takes you all the waste that is, that is um, deposit and flush down the lines. So we had to reroute some of these lines some of them have been, they had wrong or bad grade, right, in terms of soap bad levels. So we had to redo and ensure that we can have a smooth function and flow of the, of the, of the, of the feces that comes down into those lines. Noel further explained the issues encountered, which delayed the speed at which the repairs were done. The contractor would have encountered some difficulties in terms of, there were some 
concrete beams that you would have uh, that would that would have traversed some of the the pipes or the path in which the pipes were. And so you had to do some additional excavations, which would have taken a longer time to get done. We had to get the right equipment, the right tools to get that out of the way. With this accomplished, work proceeded smoothly and has been successful. Right now, the, the, the job is practically complete. Right, what is left is just some, we made it, some cosmetics, just some covering up some of the pipes with sand and covering up some of the, the chambers that are already already complete. School is ongoing today, and over by tomorrow, the contractor should be wrapping up to get all there. For the National Report, I'm Annette Moore. This is the National Report. More news after the break. The safety on our roads make this a major priority. Health of our people, a crucial necessity. Accidents happen when road users are either irresponsible or inconsiderate in one way or the other. Play your part. Reduce your speed. Be attentive. It is your personal responsibility. Let 2017 be the start of no more road fatality. Be safe. Be seen. Be smart. So let's rise up as a nation. Get to your destination. Safe. Welcome back. The Juvenile Justice Unit in the Ministry of Social Development, Housing and Community Empowerment is providing avenues for its juvenile first responders and stakeholders to be educated on ways of understanding positive youth development. This is being done through a two-day workshop organized by the OECS Juvenile Justice Reform Project and the National Center for State Courts. Rikisha St. Louis has more. The Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States has presented the National Center for State Courts as the consulting firm responsible for Juvenile Justice Reform Project Phase 2. As part of this initiative, a two-day workshop has been held with juvenile first responders to chart the way forward to positive youth development. The core purpose of the positive youth development training is to equip those critical agents who are in a youth's life with the knowledge and understanding of positive youth development. With this understanding, participants will learn simple and effective ways of engaging young people through a strength-based empowerment approach. Addressing the gathering at the National Stadium's hospitality room, Minister for Social Development, Housing and Community Empowerment, Honorable Delma Thomas, says her team is committed to the positive development of children and adolescents in Grenada. The Ministry of Social Development is well aware of all those studies done and the implication of them on child-adolescent development and will continue to provide support in this regard. I trust that at the end of the training, participants will be equipped with increased knowledge to work with adolescents and understand their behavior, which I said earlier on is very, very important, and understanding who you're dealing with, understand what they're going through. The theme for the two-day workshop is Understanding Positive Youth Development and the Adolescent Brain Outline. Representing the OECS Juvenile Justice Reform Project, Magistrate Gloria Septra Augustus speaks to the importance of the sessions. Just like a good mechanic needs to know about his vehicle, a good musician will know about notes and range and all these other terms in music. A medical doctor has to know about the anatomy. So therefore, since you as stakeholders in the juvenile justice system are going to deal with young persons, you need, and also what we do a lot of is sort of managing negative behavior. We have, as practitioners, need to understand the key organ which directs human behavior and that's the brain. So today we are in a good place. And we are in a good place to make a better place for our youth tomorrow. Facilitator Hanif Benjamin says this initiative is very timely. The world is on a paradigm shift. We have moved. We have moved. The way we treat with young people, the way we understand young people, the way we prepare for young people, it is different. And by no means, we too should move. And so it is important for us to embrace the next two days. The workshop has been funded by the United States Agency for International Development, the USAID. 
For the National Report, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Thank you, Rikisha. And finally in the news, field events dominated day one of the Caraco Zonal Sports on Thursday. The events which came on the hills of the Eastern Zonal Games at Progress Park on Wednesday were designed to give the field athletes an opportunity to compete in their area of strength. Sebastian Steele, senior coach in the Ministry of Caraco and P.T. Martinic Affairs, is optimistic that Caraco will give a good showing at the National Secondary School Games on April 5th. I am optimist, still optimistic about upset, despite our oh, athletes never have any level of um, competition uh, for this season, neither they had any extensive amount of training. But I am pretty certain that the ones that are in training will go out there and dominate the, 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 the field. We know that Avanella um, Andrew and Zane McFarlane and, and Elvis Gay and Anthony Madison, just to name a few, will go to Grenada and perform exceedingly well. So I'm confident um, there could be some surprises at the national championship. Track and field action will take center stage on Friday. That story brings us to the end of the National Report for Thursday, 21st March, 2019. Recapping the headline, Prime Minister welcomes CDB endorsement of Grenada as fastest growing economy in the Caribbean. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, thank you for joining us. I'm Delroy Lozan.